game out of it. And the slip screen nearly gets intercepted. Shannon Fitzhugh almost picked it off. You see him coming on the blitz, Western Illinois, but I think there was a little screw up there. He was looking to get Willie Watt there, and he got hit here just as he threw the ball there, pressured by number 26 there from Western Illinois, Shannon Fitzhugh. But see him setting up here in the pocket? I mean, you just don't want your quarterback taking shots like that. But if he would have got the ball to Willie Watts, it was a big play. And when he goes to the library tomorrow to study, he is going to feel every one of these hits. How many uh, times has he been hit today? He's got getting hit in almost every play, Red. Yep. Little shallow in the crossing one. He gets plowed again. Middlebrook nailed him as he threw the football. Cornell Middlebrook, I don't know how many quarterback pressures he has. They're going to need a calculator to count up all that. But he's been in the backfield all day. Again, you see Dust. Middlebrook sitting here, and the Illinois State has had problems all day long here picking up. But when you go into a total passing game, it's a jailbreak. It's a jailbreak. Sooner or later, people are just going to begin to slip through. They're just freelancing out there. <laughs> and it becomes a nightmare on Elm Street. Third down for Burke, 26-3, Western Illinois. 11.07 left in the game. Burke gets hit again. He escapes Middlebrook and won't escape Brown, who pulls him down by the shoulder pads at the 27. Tristan Davis, nice block back there, peeling back. But again, Western Illinois is only rushing three people, and they're getting pressure. They're dropping eight men into the zone here. I don't understand the confusion. This, this is unheard of. Again, take a look at it here. They're bringing one blitz here. It's only four, but you see the movement there, number 93 for Western Illinois. The pressure he got coming off the ball, Chad Don, just destroying the left guard here in the move. Watch this right here, folks. That's a flat back there for Chad Don. When you get pressure like that, you're going to get pressure on the quarterback. That is the definition of a bull rush. rush. Fourth down and 10. Burt under throws. Flag on the play. Golson got interfered with. This will be an automatic first down for Illinois State. Did he have his hand on the receiver there before Shannon Pitch, who I think he did, and that's what the referee sees. He sees that hand on the back of the receiver. It's an automatic flag. 26 to 3, Western Illinois. It will be pass interference against the Leathernecks. Dusty, I'll tell you right now, he feels like he's been in a pro wrestling tournament so far. Third penalty on the Leathernecks. In Illinois State, they are moving. Pass interference on the defense. Spot ball, first down at the interference. Instead of 10 yards, Ron Scrooge is right from the spot here. Western has a big game next week against Northern Iowa at home. Then they have a home game with Southwest Missouri State, and then they go outside the league for two games of non-conference play. Burke leaves it short, but it's still a catch. As coming back to the ball, John Laurenti, and has it at the seven-yard line near a first down. Willie Watts working outside here. Excellent block here. There was some penetration there, but Willie Watts allowed him. Watch him get outside here, folks. Willie Watts, the quarterback's going to set up right behind him there, and that's what allows him to get the ball off downfield. Good job there by Vito Bolson coming back to the ball. Excuse me, that's John Laurenti, number 26. 10.36 left in the game. 26-3. The lead is Western Illinois, but the Redbirds of Illinois State threatening to score a touchdown. This is up the middle. It goes to Quincy Washington, a huge hole, and Washington has the touchdown, his third of the season. Excellent hole there. They went behind big left tackle, Andy King, 65, 61, Jerry Melville. When you get a push like that, folks, and you can see the, L the acceleration of Quincy Washington there, the reason why they want him in here. I'm telling you, I saw a rooster tail water coming off him as he went through that line of scrimmage. Take a look at it again there. When you get a push like that, folks, a flat back, it's an easy touchdown every time. Washington outstanding speed because Illinois State had a safety against him. They will go for two here, trailing 26-9. It's Watts up the middle, stretched out. Does he have it? He does. A two-point conversion, a run by Washington, a two-point run by Watts, and Illinois State trying to fight back into the game. Early in the fourth quarter, the lead for Western Illinois, now 15.
96 yard drive for Illinois State with the wind at its back. They get a run. Quincy Washington and then they get a two point run by Willie Watts and they're back in the game at 26 to 11. Wake up call comes in. They begin to spread the field. They move around well with the pass short passing game. Good running game there. Right back in the game 26 11. And now the Redbirds get the advantage of this strong win at their back to kick it away. Steve Carroll. Tees it up and kicks it away, but it's short. It's going to be returned. Barbs is going to get a chance to return this. And gets to the 25 and spins up to the 30. It looks like we have a little flag here, probably offsides on the kickoff here on Illinois State. Just another one of those penalties in the special teams. And I'm not sure Carroll hit that very well. Well, that thing could have sailed out of the end zone. He's well, got this gale force wind in his back. I'll tell you what, that's a big play here for Western Illinois. Again, yep, we got an offsides here on Illinois State. I look for the Leathernecks to uh, decline that penalty, yeah. But that's big there, right there, getting the ball back on a 30-yard line there with the 20-mile-an-hour win. Let's, let's go to Jim Hayes with a uh, special guest. From Tuscola, Illinois, this is Tim Burke, father of Dusty Burke, the Illinois State quarterback. Redbirds coming back a little bit. You haven't lost faith, have you? No, I think we're going to get a stop here and go down and score, and then we got a ball game. I hope. Your, uh, your son playing under some pretty bad weather conditions. Feel sorry for him? Well, I, I never feel sorry for him, but uh, it, it was a little tough out there. I mean, uh, it's a little better now in the fourth quarter. We got a tailwind behind us, but it was pretty rough going into that win. If you're a quarterback, uh, he's wearing number five. I guess that's a tribute to you. You were number five in college. You played a little ball. Yes, that's true. I was number five. Where did you play? I played at Monmouth College. It's a little Division three school in Monmouth, Illinois. All right, a little distracted. You want to watch the game? The Redbirds are coming back. Guys, take it away. All right, the, and when you're a dad, now my son is a quarterback. It's real hard to set up in the stands and watch him take shot after shot after shot. Daddy Burke has been seeing Dusty get blown up a couple times. Not blown up. He's seen his son in the middle of a tag team wrestling match with no help at all. His hands tied behind his back. Uh, the only thing Dusty's going to be looking for is an ice bag after this game. But, yeah, Dusty Burke shown his toughness, shown his ability to create things, and that's what they need on offense, and they're finally getting it today. Second and six after a short run. <laughs> Sam Clements, who has been effective, hands it off, and getting to the outside is Daniels. And Daniels up the sideline, still on the move, all the way up to the... Illinois State, 23-yard line. Carlos Daniels doing a great job again, picking holes there, showing his ability. He's just not a power back. Takes it inside. Take a look at it here. They're going to go with the die play here. He's going to jump backside. Again, a little hold there on number 27 for Illinois State, but he's got Greg Hell, the linebacker. He's got outside contain there. He's got to rip through. Watch it over here again on the outside here, number 27. He's got to take on that fullback with his inside shoulder, not his outside shoulder, because you want to force everything into the middle. Big mistake there in technique. Carlos Daniels making a big play. 43-yard run by Daniels. You see his total at 154 now. The Wisconsin transfer. He gets relieved, and getting the carry is Sanvilas, and Sanvilas... San Vilas gets buried for no gain and a flag thrown right at the point of the run. Looks like another holding there. Par. Yep, holding yeah. on the Leathernecks. Probably most likely saw the tackle with his hand on the outside of the defensive end. But again, Illinois State's defense giving up some big yards, though. But if it gets near the red zone, though, they hold every time. A little over nine minutes left in the game. Western Illinois, 26 to 11 with the lead a late touchdown with 30 seconds left to go in the second quarter and then nine third quarter points holding, the on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul repeat first down big penalties again you've seen them how it's affected both teams there that was a big run for western illinois it could have put a, you know really sealed this game you know keep the ball going but now here we are with the active first and oh i don't know mitch I can't count that high. There's so many yards to go for a first down. 20. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
Al Jackson's back under center. That's what I'm going to tell you. The uh, center, Bill Bird, as Jackson runs a uh, little quarterback draw here. And finally gets knocked down after getting all that. It's about a five-yard game. But this center, Bill Burr, has had to deal with two quarterbacks. And that's a difficult thing because both quarterbacks, they pull out the different ways. you got to make sure. But that's a tribute there to Bill Burr. But I'll tell you what, you got to love the athletic ability here of Frisman Jackson. His way, he can go sideways on here and just leave people hanging. That, that's why Western Illinois' offense is so effective. Just so much athleticism at all the skilled positions. Even Clemens. Great in running around in the pocket. Leathernecks getting to work the clock here now. A little over eight minutes left in the game. They lead by 15. Second and 14. Daniels now with the career high, 154 yards rushing. But San Vilas gets it now. And San Vilas gets knocked down on the lead draw for no gain. Good job of staying home there. Adam Wall, number 14. Good job. Academic All-American playing smart. And you see Illinois is not really shifting to the motion there, staying at home, doing a better job. Injured offensive lineman for Western Illinois, and that is Keith Retchen. And this offensive line has done a wonderful job today for the Leathernecks. Retchen's been right in the middle of it. He's got to limp off. Yeah, they've done. They've done a good job on the running, and they've also done a good job here. We, we see the rushing yards. Western Illinois is going for 202 yards, and Illinois State for 47. And the funny thing is, is Western Illinois ranks seventh, giving up an average of 206 yards. So they've done a good job today taking Illinois State out of the game. But Illinois State's done a good job of also turning over the ball. Two block kicks, a pooch kick that was recovered by Western Illinois, a snap over the head of the punter. Not good for the Redbirds. Leathernecks taking the clock down. Jackson on the option. Chase down, David Bull there to hit the quarterback. Jackson. Adam Wall there, excellent job there, playing the option there, stretching it out, working underneath on the tackle. James Reddick, number 67, allowing his pursuit to get over the top, make the tackle, keep him from getting a big game. Fourth down now for the Leathernecks. But they just reset the clock so the Leathernecks can take down another 20 seconds or so, using up some time and getting field position. That's what the 43-yard run by Daniels did, was to get him out of uh, jail field position-wise, moving into the strong win. See what Carlos Daniels, you know, th that's just the athleticism they have at every skill position, Mitch. They can take something for a, for a loss and turn it into a big game. And when you have so many skilled positions like that, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Timeout called by Western Illinois. They just ran the clock down. And we'll be back with the Leathernecks' fourth and ten play after this. Right guard uh, Keith Rutchen of the Leathernecks uh, hobbled off the field just moments ago. Twisted left knee. They looked at it. He's okay. They expect he will return. Back to you. He didn't want to leave before. Jim's still Push alive down there. there. Yeah, he's still down there. I was looking for him to come by here in a little canoe, maybe rowing by. He's down there with Leonardo DiCaprio and <laughs> Kate Winslet. Fourth down. They're going to bring it on the reverse. It's fumbled. And covered up by Nicholas of Western Illinois, but it's still going to be a exchange on downs. Again, the Illinois State defense holding on a big play there. You know, and it, it, there's still a lot of time left, Mitch. I mean, it, it, it's never over, you know, until it's over here. And Illinois State's offense is coming alive here again in the fourth quarter. Again, you know, just some turnovers, you know, some points. It's just cost them here. But if they can, Dusty Burke showing a way now to go vertical. And, uh, Western Illinois defense here playing the prevent. I think they might change that and go to a little back to what was helping them and go into an attacking style. 6.29 left. Three timeouts remaining for Illinois State. They are two possessions down. Trailing 26 to 11. As the Redbirds' Dusty Burke 18 at 29 for 179. He'll scramble this time. 
headed for the sideline to stop the clock. He was hit by the linebacker, Jason McWilliams. But Burke picks up about nine yards and out of bounds to stop the clock. And he actually had Brian Shavey open there right over the middle here. You're going to see him coming. He's going to release inside here. And I'm not sure if the camera will catch him, but he was sitting right there. He didn't get him, but good. Another good play by Dusty Burke. Hey, if you can't see receiver, let's get upfield. Get out of bounds here. This guy, Dusty Burke, I can see why they got him in at starting quarterback now. Rich, we saw Burke do this two years ago in this stadium in a similar situation against Indiana State. That was kind of his coming out party when Kevin Glenn was injured. This time he skips a rock to Vito Golson. It'll be third and one. So Illinois State tried to take advantage of the second one to get the ball up the field. And, you know, they're doing a pretty good job on a passing game against one of the top-ranked defensive passing teams in the Gateway Conference. In fact, in one double-A, but, you know, they're showing the ability that when you can run it and everything, you can mix it up, you get those linebackers not blitzing as much, you give them to drop back a little more, you're giving Dusty Burke some time to look down the field. There, it looks like the wet ball just slipped out of his hand. They have used Shavy. He has a career high today. Burke has third and one, though. Watts lines up as the up man, not the back guy. As it goes to Quincy Washington, and Washington has a first down. Driving up to his own 45, that's a five-yard pickup. Quincy Washington turning a one-yard gain into a five-yard gain. You see the drive, the termination of those running backs in the backfield. And here I like see Illinois State. They're hustling, getting up to the line of scrimmage. They need to get a quick score here. The college game, the clock stopped until the chains are mm -hmm. set. Now the clock moves, shade over six minutes left in the game. Illinois State, two possessions down. Burke, Shavy broken up. Excellent defensive play. And that was Brian Kolar. Brian Kolar on the play, and he might have got away with a little push there. You see Shavy on the out move there, and again, looking for his big tight end, 6'3", 240. Take a look at it. Getting great protection up front here. His offensive line allowing him to throw the ball field. See Brian Shavy working the outside there. Now, Ben, I'll tell you, Mitch, I, I, do, I, do I need to call timeout on that one, too? <laughs> You're running out of timeout. Oh. Illinois State has the wind at its back. They trail 26 to 11. Six minutes left in the game. Burke from the pocket using Shavy in the middle of the field. And Shavy now over 100 yards receiving gets to the 40-yard line of Western Illinois. Did you see Willie Watts kick outfield and peel those people off there? He took number 32 there for them. Cornell Middlebrook, who's been in the backfield all day anyways, he got a piece of meat out of him there, but excellent job by Shavy. Hey, I'll tell you, Dusty Burke, he's sitting back there in the pocket now. He's getting time, and they're going right down the field here, and he's shown his ability to read well when what the defense has given him. They're taking those holes in the zone, and Shavy's a big target. Burke using the win. Blitz, but they pick it up. Now the rain's starting to fall again as a catch made by Wayne Riley. And it had not rained for about 20 minutes or so, and then the floodgates open again. Number 22 there, John Warren, defensive line, getting a tip on the ball there before the uh, mighty monsoons come back here again. And what a break. This is the way Denver Johnson's year is gone. He's thinking, wait, I'm about ready to get back in the game. It's not raining. I'm driving up the field. I'm two scores down, but I'm about ready to get one of the two. And then, whoosh, it starts to rain. <laughs> Head coach Job on the sideline for Illinois State. Mitch Holt is back with Rich Baldinger and Jim Hayes. And it's starting to flood again here at Hancock Stadium. Get the oars out. <laughs> Get the motorboat going. Illinois State driving. And I'm telling you what, folks, it looks like someone just turned on a fire hose out of here. <laughs> Illinois State, two scores down, but driving for one of the two. And then the heavens open once again. You're going to use a slalom or two skis? No, I'll tell you what, you're going to need two skis. You need a double motorboat to get through these waves. At the 31-yard line of Western. 26 to 11 is the score. The 14th-ranked Leathernecks trying to hang on here. Watts. Like there's a face mask. Yeah. Face mask penalty on Middlebrook as he took Watts down at the 30. Watts looks like a little banged up there. It's 
Hopefully he's okay getting up there a little slow. But Willie Watts showing his ability to go inside and outside. Great ladder movement. Take a look at Mitch. Hopefully he's okay there. Probably he's got a finger in the eye, but you see, you can't quite see him. But you see him working here on the sidelines there. And it's Cornell Middlebrook who's trying to take his right eyeball with him and put him in the pocket with his change. <laughs> So Illinois State is threatening, taking advantage of the face mask. They'll call it a five-yard face mask penalty. A penalty in favor of Illinois State while they're on the drive as it turned. <laughs> There's a revelation. Well, the, the most positive thing here for Illinois State is they're having a good fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Excellent. In the Redbirds, 0-5 for the first time since 1978. Burke. Wants Golson all the way for the touchdown. Flag thrown in the end zone. Golson got mugged by Clifton Field. Fields. Mugged. Disrobed, leveled, surgically removed from the field. <laughs> Peter Golson doing a good job here. Dusty Burke again. Good time in the pocket, looking upfield, looking for the timing route here. You see Vito Golson working just onto the corner there, the corner route. But Clifton Fields there. Uh, he wanted that jersey to hang up on his wall. Be a 15-yard penalty and give the Redbirds a first down in scoring position. Peter goes an excellent job there, um, Mitch, on the release there. He got the step on Clifton Fields, working down the sidelines for the corner route. And whenever you get that much Defense, there. Pass interference. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Fields called for the penalty. First down for Illinois State at the 13 of Western Illinois. The Leathernecks actually 26 to 11. Remember the movie Twister? Mm -hmm. There were like tractors and cattle. But we're starting to see that here. We're seeing all kinds of debris on the going across the field. I'm just waiting for some human bodies to come flying by here, folks. We've got the radar scope on so we can continue seeing the game. If there here. is, it'll hit Burke because he's been hit enough. <laughs> oh, he's, he's been hit from every corner, every angle. There's not going to be a part of him that's not going to be sore tomorrow. First and 10 for Burke at the 12. Down by 15. Burke, Golson, there's a bump by Fields. It is, talk about bump and run, it's just bump and bump coverage. Bump and bump. But I, I tell you what, they're Western Illinois, as we take a look at the penalty, Mitch. Western Illinois comes on the blitz here, but the right tackle, I gotta highlight my offensive lineman, number 74, Aaron Peterson, picks up the cornerback on the blitz, giving Dusty Burke time. Watch right here on the outside here. See him pick up the blitz here? Right there, Dusty Burke now. Again, Clifton Field, hanging on to Vito Golson, looking for a free ride. Illinois State's done a better job adjusting their routes. They've gone to the back side of the backfield, the quick slants. Mm -hmm to the receivers and right in the field they're not trying to run against the eight and nine men in the box first and goal up to five redbirds trying to battle back here five minutes left to go in the game 14th ranked leathernecks trying to hang on losing two years in a row to these redbirds washington big hole he scores again quincy washington with his second score of the fourth quarter big jerry melville just pushing the power there, but the acceleration, the acceleration of Quincy Washington is tremendous. When he hits that line of scrimmage, it goes to afterburners. You're not gonna see it. But here, take a look at it right here in the pits here. Excellent block there by number 35. The fullback for him, Tristan Davis, getting some movement. When you get guys like that digging and driving, it's an easy touchdown for your running back. Now, you need 15 points. You get six. So do you go for the eight now the second time? And Illinois State makes the decision to kick for one here. They'll go for two if they get another score. And the point after hits the upright, and it is no good. Oh, they miss the point after. <laughs> Mitch, that hurt. That makes it a three-possession game now. Oh, and you know what? They got a partial block on it. Watch on the outside here. Watch number 83. It, number 83 there for Illinois State. Number Steve Sachs, the tight end. That's a freshman there making a mistake there. He's got to step inside. And see, again, I, I don't think they know what they're... It's just confusion there, and... You know, it, it, again, you get some pressure on the kicker, and Carroll Carroll misses the point after. It makes it, I should say, a two-possession. They needed two possessions to tie. Right. 
but now they still need two possessions down That's nine points. And again, this is the mistake. These are the things with Denver Johnson has been talking about all year long. They've moved the ball well. Their defense has played pretty well here, but it, it's just, can you think of any more ways to lose a game? No, but they're inventing <laughs> ways now. Today is a full day of college football action at 6 p.m. Central tonight. Third-ranked Oklahoma takes on Kansas. A missed PAT after a Washington run. And now Illinois State will try for an onside kick. An onside kick that is still floating to the sideline, and the Leathernecks jump on it late. Illinois State had a shot. It got by the first line of Western Illinois' hands team, but the Redbirds couldn't pounce on it. Vito goes to do an excellent job. Take a look at it here. Coming down the sideline, so you get a good bounce on the ball. It's wet and everything, but watch Vito go, go right there for it. A little bit over the ball there. It just kind of bounced back in favor of Western Illinois, but, you know, that's the way the ball can fall all day here, but Illinois State, I mean, I, these guys could write a on the mistakes that they've made out there, especially in the special team. They, it, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. 4.53 left in the game now. Two timeouts remaining for Illinois State, trailing 26 to 17. Clemens in at quarterback. Illinois State forced him on a scrimmage, and do they force it a piece of time? The ball was handed off. Now Illinois State says they have the football. And they do. They do. They're going to give it to him? No, they're going to rule him down by contact. The hit was made. Bring up the linebackers here. Split the gap here again. The offensive guard to that side there. Not enough people to block it. Too many people to that side. Gene Galat on the big hit. And that's close. Again, did we have the instant replay there, Mitch? But we got a little head red hanky. <laughs> 440 left to go in the game. Heck of a job and running back Carlos Daniels to hang on all for Western Illinois. Hit is the ball was handed off to him. In the league, Town State leads Southwest Missouri State 21 to 10, with just 16 seconds left to go in the first half of that game. Later games, Northern Iowa will host Southern Illinois, and Indiana State will host Western Kentucky. In 1A ball today, top 25 games, Miami of Florida. 49 to 27. State 45. 237. Fourth rank, Nebraska and Baylor, 35 to 7. Oregon leads Cal 28 to nothing at halftime. And again, Illinois State stacks up on the line of scrimmage. And again, they stack up on Clemens this time, the quarterback. Andrew Proposi there, number 12, getting a good hit there. Also, number 27 for Illinois State. Greg Helley, the linebacker, getting back there. And, you know, this is they, they play with this great attitude today. They've been setting the tempo, but, I mean, it's got to be frustrating for Denver Johnson, especially after a great drive down the field, to come away with, again, a mistake and a missed extra point. Well, you, you're two possessions down, yep. and after the touchdown, you're still, still two, two possessions, possessions down. down. So you work all that way, you're still behind there. But again, I, I think his team, you know, it's, a, it's new guys out here, new coaching. It, it, it's, it's just got to be so frustrating for him because he knows they're playing hard. Timeout now called by Western Illinois. Yeah, they take a intentional delay of game just to run the clock down. Mitch Holt is back in Normal, Illinois. The 14th-ranked Leathernecks of Western Illinois lead Illinois State 26-17. A reminder, full day of college football action. A full night tonight on Fox, 6 p.m. Central. Third-ranked Oklahoma takes on Kansas at Kansas and the Arizona Wildcats. After that, we'll take on the Oregon State Beavers in a Pac-10 battle. College football coverage continues right here on Fox Sports Net. Third and 16 for Western Illinois. Clemens on a play fake in trouble now gets by and 
Does the hook slide stop up at the 41? Gain seven, needed 16, but stays in bounds to keep the clock moving, but now an injured Western Illinois player. Talking about that Oklahoma-Kansas game, uh, Bob Stoops and everything that extends all the way to the gateway there, his uncle, his defensive coordinator, and defensive line coach there up at Youngstown, Youngstown State. State. Bobby grew up at Youngstown. Played at Cardinal Mooney High School there, and then um, went on to the University of Iowa, where he played when Don Patterson was on that mm -hmm. staff. We have an injured Western Illinois offensive lineman. Sam Clemens making a good there out of the pocket, being able to free himself from Adam Wall, who should have had a sack there, but that was, again, good job there by <coughs> Sam Clemens, keeping it alive. Almost coming up there with a big play, but a few yards short for the first down. Rich, it's the center. It's the center, Bill Berg, the, the Bill senior Berg. from Beaverton, Oregon, who started his career at San Jose State in 1A football. Yeah, you don't like to see that. And he's done a great job today up front there. And not putting any weight at all on that left leg. But it's not that knee there and everything, but as he said, up front, working with two quarterbacks there, make sure the snaps are good. Excellent job on pass protection and also up front get movement on the running lane. Well, with fourth down, they don't have to bring in a new center to snap from scrimmage down. Cypress will try to punt for field position. David Conway will snap it back to Cypress. A low snap. Here comes Illinois State, but Cyphers gets it away. The last time his punt was pinned inside the five, this one will go into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. The Redbirds with 3.25 left in the game, trailing 26 to 17. Still aren't done. But join us in two weeks on Fox with our Gateway Game of the Week as Southern Illinois will host the Penguins of Youngstown State at McAndrew Stadium in Carbondale. That'll be a 12.30 start Central Time on Fox in the nation's best 1AA football conference. Don't miss that game. Jeff Ryan there for Youngstown State. Ability to run the ball and pass it. D.J. Mays in the backfield there. Very explosive offense. You know what? I'm going to tell you what. I'm, I know now that Denver Johnson is cursed. As Burke is in trouble. You know, the wind has been a factor for three quarters, blowing out of the south, southeast. And now, and, completely and now it's changed. going to the north, northwest. <laughs> I'm, I kid you not. If we can get a shot, look at this. It's the, look, the flag is blowing at a 180-degree uh, difference turns. than it was before. <laughs> so Johnson had it in his face three quarters of this game. Oh, I, I, you know, I just let you know, Denver Johnson He's has... He's cursed. He, he is. <laughs> I think we got to get down and take the Maloki off him right now. <laughs> But here we see the penalty on Western Illinois. It looks like they got a face mask on the play. Number 58, the defensive end rushing there. Brandon Brown, actually linebacker, he lined up as a defensive end. They're now going into the win. <laughs> and Denver Johnson's never lost for words, so I know he's got something for all of us. This is amazing. <laughs> now he sees the wind switch and blowing in his face after it was in his face in the third quarter. Dusty Burke doesn't care. He's played very courageously. 26 to 17. He trails by nine. Burke, this is Washington. Washington trying to get out of bounds and does at the 30. Gains three yards but stops the clock with 3.02 left in the game. I like the smoothness of Quincy Washington, the way he gets outside there. People just kind of bounce off him. Good acceleration. And you know what? I wish they would have done more of this in the third quarter. Here you see Dusty Burke setting up, get it to the upfield for his running back so he doesn't have to stop. Look at people just bouncing off this guy. And he's supposed to just be a speedster. Every running back Illinois State has, it's just they just run with power. They believe in one thing, planning their number in your chest. Second and seven, the Redbirds have one timeout left, but still need two possessions. As they trail by nine. Two scoring possessions. Burke will run. First down. And Burke can run to the sidelines. Stops the clock and runs for 20 yards. I hope we have the block there by Quincy Washington downfield. He gets a pancake here. We just talked about his running ability here, but an excellent job there getting downfield, staying alive there. 
Watch it here. He's going to come out of the backfield here. He's over on the left side here. You see Jeff Burke staying alive. Let's go right. No, let's go left. Let's come back. Now watch number two here coming out of your back. Right there. Boom. Oh, oh, man. Number three got it. The whiplash front side and back side. Carry him off in his dresser. Who slapped Kohler on the back of the head, though, as he was going down? First down for Dusty Burke, trailing by nine. And it's broken up. And a flag thrown. This will be at least holding on Kolar. It was on the back of Shavy, the tight end. That's just such a mismatch there. Is that number four? Uh, is that number four, Damon Williams on that? Maybe Williams. Yeah, I think it's Damon Williams. He's seen 5'10", 180, but he's going against a tight end there who's six two, 240 pounds. It's a mismatch every time. See if this will be a hold or pass interference. Against Western. It is holding, so that's 10 yards, but automatic first down moves it to the 40-yard line of Western Illinois. Still 2.44 left in the game. And you know what? The one thing Western Illinois has, has stopped is their blitzing. They've gone to this prevent. They've not brought any more pressure to Dusty Burke, and he's just picking them apart right now. First down. Burke. Pass deflected. Look out. This will end the game. An interception by Damon Williams. He's going to bring it all the way back, and the Leathernecks are going to say good day to Dusty Burke. That ball didn't come clean out of the hand of Dusty Burke. I think that thing slipped. Or it was slipped off. It was slipped or tip, but, you know, right there we talked about going through that flat. You've got to make sure you get that ball down. It's tipped in the air, and that's an easy reception there for Jason, Mc for Jason Williams, who actually just had the penalty on the play before. Take a look at it here. The protection's pretty good here. It looks like number 93 there. Good job there. See how he got that push on the oh, offensive tackle there? Then that's number 93 for Western Jan Illinois. Janton. And, you know, he's had a big game all day. And here, Jason Williams just picking it up, going all the way for the touchdown. Damon Dusty Williams. Burke, though, hustling there, trying to get him there. Damon Williams, first touchdown and first interception of the year. And the point after is good by Justin Lange. And that makes it 33 to 17, Western Illinois. Number 93 there, Chad Dawn, what he got, he got the offensive tackle on his heels. Why, Mitch? Because he worked an upfield move, kind of felt the tackle lean back, I'm gonna go right to a bull rush, he pushed him, pushed him to the backfield, to the quarterback. Quarterback doesn't have that throwing lane anymore. Hand up, tips the ball, big touchdown going the other way. But Dusty Burke, my hat's off to you. Played a heck of a football game today. Many fans don't watch the play on the offensive line versus the defensive line, but it's like wrestling. It is. And many times in practice, it's just one-on-one -on -one plays where you work different moves uh, for both the lineman and for the rusher. It, it, it's all hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's somebody controlling the other person there. The defensive lineman that time, number 93, Chad Dawn, had his hands inside on the tackle. Now he can control the, the body, the flow of the offensive tackle. He gets a push there, gets his hand up, big tip. Cuts down the other way and seals the game for Western Illinois. So Illinois State has had two punts blocked. They had a point after that hit the upright. They've had a snap over the head of the punter. And now an interception return for a touchdown of around 60 yards. And they trail 33-17 to 17 to the 14th-ranked Leathernecks of Western Illinois with two and a half minutes left in the game. And this is, you know, this is no fault of Dusty Burke here. Special teams today, a complete disaster. Well, they can help themselves here if they can get some kind of return. Cypress kicking into the wind. And a decent kick into the wind. Fumbled and picked up by Butler. Butler down at the 13. Let's check in now with our sideline reporter, Jim Hayes, for an injury update. All right, Leatherneck center, Bill Berg, the senior, hobbled off the field a little while ago. Possible fractured left fibula. So they're going to have to get him x-rayed. Hopefully he'll be okay, but he won't be playing any more this afternoon. Back to you, fellas. You know, we, our crowd mics could pick him up shrieking in pain on the field. Yep. He was in big-time pain, and now we know why. It, it, man, you hate to see things like that, and... Uh, you know, it, it seems like more of it happens on the AstroTurf, Mitch. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you wish that they could play on the grass, but, you know, sometimes you get caught up on that stuff, and uh, hopefully it's not that bad and he can get back in the plane. I'm going to tell you, in the not-too-distant future, it's going to be their all-natural grass or all that new kind of stuff that they're using. That <laughs> Chopped up tires. Yeah. Golson catches it, gain a nine, maybe ten. 
But now Western Illinois here, 14th ranked team in the country. Huge game coming up next week with Northern Iowa. They'll host them at home. And they're going to have to do it probably without their center, Bill Berg, who will probably be lost for the season with that injury. And they're going to be playing with Ryan Soley, the freshman there, coming in there. And that's a big, that's a big if going into the game with the freshman at center. Burke slings it over to Washington in the flat. It gets out of bounds to stop the clock at 27. Gains a couple yards. 2.03 left in the game. 33-17 Western Illinois. Illinois State, I think you have something to build on here. I think they finally found a quarterback. Somebody can make some happen. He can run. He can get the ball down the field. They've got their running game going. It's just they've got to understand that there's three parts to this game. Special teams are just as important. And if you don't understand what to do, Call timeout, find out what you're doing, because this is ridiculous that have that many block punts. Burke in trouble. Finds Washington again in the open field and a great tackle to keep him in bounds by Damon Williams. Excellent job of wrapping up there. Quincy Washington, you see his ability, but that's the way you wrap up somebody in open field. Drive your helmet through the man's legs there. That way you keep him off balance. Bring him down quick. 33-17, Dusty Burke trailing by 16. Shavy drops it. He's had a big day, Shavy has. Seven catches for 105 yards, but that time he just dropped it. Yeah, he did. He's had an excellent game here, and he's a lot of mismatches. But again, you know, it's so frustrating for your offense. You go down the field, you miss an extra point, but you're battling from behind every time when your special teams is just turning over the ball and giving it to Western Illinois there on the 20 and the 15-yard line. 134 left in the game now. And fourth down for Dusty Burke. Burke against the Blitz finds Golson first down. Redsbirds stay alive up at the 42 with a gain of 11. Excellent job, Dusty Burke there. Seeing the hot, they brought two to the weak side that time. So he gets rid of the ball there. Vito Golson makes the adjustment on the slant. These are the types of things you want to see with your young quarterback. You're going to get a guy in here. Let's get him going. Let's get him an idea of reading it and moving the offense, showing his good things here. No huddle. Burke fumbling the shotgun snap. Washington drops the ball and nearly a lateral. Nearly it was there, but again, Dusty Burke playing it smart. He sees that the zone coverage, he has nothing down the field. His throwing lanes are stopped because the linebackers are getting deep coverage. I'm going to get it to my dump man there on the outside, Quincy Washington. An so interesting state of affairs, Mitch, here at Illinois State. Yeah. And they're not done with tough games. <laughs> no, not at all. Still got to play Northern Iowa. Youngstown, Western Kentucky, all of them. Burke the throw, deflected. Intended for Andriaki and well covered. Andriaki had a good game day, some big receptions, but... You know, we talked to the people here at Illinois State before the game, Mitch, you know, and everybody was talking about leadership. Well, let me tell you something. It starts at that quarterback. Yeah, it's Burke showing him. He doesn't have to be the best athlete and everything, but he's got to be a guy that steps in the huddle and is going to make things happen. And, you know, right here, your offense, you can begin to build on this. Hey, maybe we found somebody who can make things happen. The offense started clicking. You just keep fighting it through it, and things will work out. Third and ten for Dusty Burke. Blitz for the Leathernecks. And this is Golson with lots of room to run, plus a downfield block. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Willie Watts getting downfield. How about these two running backs, the way they block downfield, Mitch? That's what you want to see. You're going to have a chance when guys are doing that. 102 left to go in the game. And now Dusty Burke has thrown for 276 yards. He had a big game back in his freshman season when he was the freshman of the year. As the Redbirds now have first down with a minute left in the game. Slant, Golson, immediately hit and a short gain of about two yards. Again, Dusty, you know, Dusty Burke showing a good job, going, showing good composure in the pocket here. And this is something they've got to build on. I mean, this is what you got to do. They're showing they can spread this field here. They can move the ball up. And this is what they did not have with Suzunis, that quarterback, plus his scrambling ability here. 
of Dusty Burke is tremendous. So, it, you know, it, you, yes, you might have lose the game, though, Mitch, but you know what? you got to find some little things to grab onto at this situation. You know, the Titanic sink, you know, you got to go find that lounge chair to hang on, you know, when it hits water and everything. So maybe Dusty Burke is that piece of balsa wood floating in the water. Find the floating door. <laughs> This is not a career high for Burke. He had 346 yards at Southern Illinois as a freshman. He's at 284 today. And, you know, also, too, when you see your backs downfield blocking, like you saw Willie Watson the play before yep. that, Quincy Washington, that shows me a, a team that hasn't quit. That shows me an attitude. It's frustrating right now for them, but they haven't quit, and that's important. They use their final time out here with second down. Actually can pick up a first down at the six. They have the ball at the eight. Burke wants Golson on the fade. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Vito Golson with the touchdown on the fade. His sixth career touchdown. And now Illinois State will be scratching their heads thinking, you know what? If we don't miss that point after, and yep. things could have been much different. And if you did something, one of those block punts didn't happen in yeah. the first half. But again, good job here on the protection offensive line on the slide, finding Vito Golson on the, on the fade there. And what he's doing, Vito Golson, he's getting an excellent outside release, and he's not getting at all. The cornerback there, Clifton, is not getting any push on him, so he's getting a direct release off the line of scrimmage. And all they're doing, Dusty Burks is laying up over the top there. Illinois State will go for two. They trail by ten. This would put him within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. The snap is fumbled. Burke is in trouble. And the lead for Western Illinois will be 33-23. Take another look now at the fade thrown to Vito Golson. You see him on the fade here. Again, I talk about that passing lane here. He gets it off on a three-step. He throws the fade here. But an excellent job. But you see, you couldn't really see Vito Golson on the release. But when he comes off that line of scrimmage, it's so important for that cornerback to at least distort him a little bit there. Vito getting down the field on that fade. It's laid out there. Big pass, big touchdown, and a good game for him today. Ten plays, 85 yards. Golson with the touchdown catch in just a minute, 31. And it's, it, again, it, it, it's, it's got to be frustrating for Denver Johnson. It is for us up here, Mitch, watching this game today because you know this Illinois State, we've been seeing them for how many years, how explosive their offense is. Yep. And they found that quarterback to make things happen. You know, last year was questionable for him there, the quarterback. And, you know, they got Dusty Burke in here. Hopefully they can stick with him, keep some things going here in offense, and hopefully get some wins before the end of the year. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm impressed with Western Illinois. Oh, yeah. Now, losing their center is not going to help. No. But Don Patterson is really doing some neat things in Macomb, Illinois, with this football team. Excellent job on defense of mixing up the blitzes and bringing those crossfire dogs. Very difficult for the offensive line to pick those up, and they were in Dusty Burke's face all day until the fourth quarter. Steve Carroll's going to try an onside kick. Last time it was almost recovered. It gets by the first group again. Flag thrown on the play. Probably be offside on the Redbirds, but the... Leathernecks recover. This they do a better job in covering up on the ball that time. What's so important is if the ball goes through, you still got to go pick out a red jersey and go hit it. Protect your guy covering up the ball. Offsides on Illinois State decline. And Western can go to a knee here a couple times. Illinois State out of timeouts. Western Illinois, they, you know, they took advantage though, of those turnovers. They turned them into points, and that's what a good team does, and that's the reason why they're out on top of this, and they're going to win this football game today, Mitch. And snapping it. Is it solely? Yeah, it's a freshman. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Now they moved week. Dunkman over. Looks like Dunkman, the Dunkman. guard, moved over, yeah. They moved Dunkman over to center and put solely at left guard. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what, that's something they're going to begin to work on yeah. right at the end of this game here. They're going to start taking snaps because even if Gabe Dunkman goes in, he's got to get used to the quarterback and certain plays, and it's different every time. When you're running the option, you're setting up in the pass, that quarterback's going to pull out at different times. You've got to make sure you get that snap up every time. That's where it all starts. They can't afford, especially against Northern Iowa, any mistakes. And, Rich, the other thing that's impressive about Western Illinois, we knew coming into the game they could throw it. Mm -hmm. Prisman Jackson, huge game last week. 
that uh, in this game they ran the ball as well. Yeah, they did. Carlos Daniels showing why, you know, coming from Wisconsin, showing his ability to go inside and outside, the strength, the quickness. It reminds me of a smaller bus who we're going to see in a few days, but tomorrow. 33-23. <laughs> The victory for Western Illinois as Don Patterson talks with Denver Johnson as the 14th ranked Leathernecks of Don Patterson beat Illinois State after losing to the Redbirds the last two years. Our next television game will come up in two weeks. Youngstown State will be on the road. They'll take on the Salukis of Southern Illinois at McAndrews Stadium in Carbondale, Illinois. In the final score, 33-23. Western Illinois beating Illinois State. Coming up next on Fox, you got to see this. For Rich Baldinger and for Jim Hayes, this is Mitch Holtis saying thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend.